Hello, uh, glad you've tuned in again uh, for the second half of the information on slavery and talking this time about slaves in the colonies, starting first with the northern colonies. It, were, it was the merchants in the northern colonies that is going to profit from the slave trade. Uh, it's only in um, New England that there are the excellent ports that will allow for shipbuilding and for uh, the Atlantic trade. So in the South, there, there are no good ports, uh, no large cities. So it is in the northern colonies that uh, people are going to profit from the slave trade. Now, they will, people in New England will also be buying slaves for their own use. Um, it was not unusual for every household to have at least one and sometimes uh, four or five slaves uh, to help out um, in the house. Um, sometimes uh, businesses would hire slaves as workers, uh, especially, for instance, in shipbuilding and the other uh, businesses that were connected to shipbuilding, such as rope makers, sail makers, um, those who made uh, barrels, uh, crates for shipping, that they would use African slaves. But by and large, there was not as much need for uh, laborers in the North as there would be in the South because uh, they don't have the cash crops that require so many laborers. There are a continuous stream of immigrants from England and other places in Europe coming to America uh, that they had a large body of worker, possible laborers, workers um, from England. So don't have agriculture that requires a large number of laborers. Uh, plenty of immigrants contain, continuing to stream into New England and it's a profitable venture as far as doing business, buying and selling slaves, but not needing so many themselves. But one point I want to make clear. People in the northern colonies had no moral objection to slavery. And even though there might be some free blacks, and there were some free Africans that lived in the northern colonies, they were discriminated against. So as far as Puritans, um, Anglicans, uh, whatever group of people that were settling on the east coast of North America, they did not object to slavery on ethical or moral grounds. They all viewed people from Africa as either subhuman or not human at all. So that's the northern colonies as well as southern colonies. Now in the southern colonies as we've already talked about, there was sparse population because what they're going to find to profit from is agriculture. And to uh, make a profit, they have got to have uh, larger and larger plantations, larger and larger um, properties in order to continue to make a profit from sugar because I'm sorry, a profit from tobacco, which is the first crop, first cash crop that will be um, planted in the South. And tobacco, just like rice and indigo and cotton, which would all become cash crops in the South, uh, those crops depleted the soil of its, of its, uh, potential for growth, uh, the nutrients in the soil would be leached out very quickly by these 
crops. So landowners uh, have to continue to buy more and more acres because they're going to have to use crop rotation. So they will, once you plant tobacco in a field, if you plant it three years in a row, three or four years in a row, the fourth year, your um, harvest is not going to be very good uh, because it's not going to grow good plants that produce um, the plants that, where they get the leaves, they use the leaves of the tobacco plant uh, to make their tobacco. Um, so they have to leave some ground unplanted and, and then after um, two or three years they will rotate the crop, plant the land that had been left fallow uh, and leave other uh, portions of their acreage unplanted or fallow. Uh, now sometimes, taking the example from the uh, Native Americans, Native Americans would plant uh, beans, a variety of different beans that they would plant to put nutrients back in the soil because legumes, which includes beans and peas of a, a great variety, um, those plants actually uh, put nutrients into the soil. So they might have several acres planted in legumes um, for two or three years and then they would plant it in tobacco again. Immigration into the southern colonies slowed down after the 1650s. Uh, there never were as many um, people coming from England to the southern colonies as there would be to the northern colonies. Because uh, after so many years, uh, the land is already taken up by these original landowners and then others uh, who come in and buy up the land. So, never as many immigrants going to the southern colonies. And in the mid-1600s, England has a civil war. Uh, King Charles I was trying to become an absolute ruler, where England had this centuries-long tradition of constitutional monarchies. Charles I is trying to rule without parliament. Uh, so there's a war between um, the roundheads, as they would be called, they were Puritans, and the loyalists, who were the aristocrats, who were loyal to, loyal to the king. So that civil war greatly reduced the population of England. So by 1660, um, not as many people are willing to leave England for America. Those who had gone as indentured servants, um, they, life isn't so bad in England anymore because of the reduction of the population. So labor-intensive agriculture dominates in all the southern colonies and while before the 1660s indentured servants and uh, people the company sent over as laborers provided the need for the laborers. But after um, 1660s, about 1670, those southern colonies will begin to use slave labor, um, slaves from Africa. So by 1675, southern colonies are passing laws that protect slave owners and that allow them to use African slaves. And what makes slavery different in America, in North America, uh, than other parts of the world is slavery does become race-based and perpetual. In other words, it is only Africans that will be used as slaves in the South. And 
It is perpetual in the sense that if a man is a slave, his wife and his children are slaves also, and his grandchildren and great-grandchildren for generations are slaves. So it is perpetual. This makes the difference in slavery in the American South than in South America or the West Indies. The map I have up on the next slide shows the slave trade from Africa to the Americas from 1650 to 1860. You can see that they are all coming from the West Coast around Senegal, Sierra Leone, um, the Congo, Angola. That's where those ports are, those fortresses that holds slaves to be sold uh, into slave ships. If you look at the numbers, where, does, where do most of the slaves go? They go to Brazil. Five million slaves go to Brazil to work in sugar plantations, coffee plantations, in mining. And the next place that gets the highest number of slaves is the West Indies. Four and a half million slaves from Africa were sold into the West Indies. Where if you look at the American South, actually uh, that includes all of the, the uh, British colonies in America, only a half a million. I see, I see only a half a million. That's still too many. Uh, but it is nowhere near the number of slaves that were sent to other parts of the Americas. Half a million to Lima, Peru. 2%, um, 0.2 uh, million in uh, Central America. 1 million to Europe. So, approximately 10 to 15 million enslaved people were transported from Western Africa to the Americas. I ask my classes when I teach this, um, well, before I get to that, I have another uh, map on the next slide which shows the number of African Americans in the 13 colonies in the 17th and 18th centuries. I'm not going to try to mention all of these numbers, but if you see by the graph that's in the lower left-hand corner, it shows that there, the number of slaves uh, up until uh, 1700 uh, was very minimal, but that by the 1780s it has increased to almost 600,000 slaves living in the 13 colonies. That includes uh, the northern colonies, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, uh, as well, of course, as Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So, I started to say I always ask my students when I teach this at college if slavery then has been abolished, if the Civil War, which we know was fought in the United States in the 1760s, made slavery illegal in the United States, did it end slavery? No, of course not. Um, in fact, according to the CIA, uh, they estimate that over 50,000 people are trafficked into or transited through the United States annually as sex slaves, workers in the domestic industry, garment industry, and agricultural slaves. The United States is, this is all information from the CIA. The United States is a destination country for thousands of men and women and children trafficked largely from Mexico and East Asia. 
but also countries in South Asia, Central America, Africa, and Europe for the purposes of sexual and labor exploitation. And the, I'm sorry to say that the port in the United States that sees more human trafficking than anywhere else in the United States is Houston, Texas. Um, there are ongoing uh, programs and efforts to end this human trafficking, but since slavery has existed since the beginning of time, can we really hope or expect that slavery can end in our lifetime? I don't know. What do you think? If you would send me comments, I would love to hear your views on this. If you have any questions, I welcome any kind of questions. And I do hope that you will subscribe and that you will come back again for another session. Thank you.